At this point, if you run it, I'm getting this data output to the screen. I threw in some weird stuff with empty spaces. So we have to deal with that later. But here's a comic where I just press enter, or I press space. And then there's the gibberish comic and then real comics. So it is outputting it. I can't tell what year this one is. I'm going to get it when I click the, the info icon. So here it is showing Superman number one, Superman 99. So it's showing the data. I want to make that button active. I want to be able to click any one of these so that it then displays info on that comic. When we get it back into our Visual Studio project, it will display in a nice little pop-up. For the moment, it'll display in an ugly little div, but it'll be a nice pop-up later. So back to our HTML, our plain old HTML, we've got this div that displays the table. At runtime, there's, no, there's nothing in the table until we fill it in with data. And um, same sort of thing here, I want to create a, a placeholder to display this data. Now, when I was kind of beta testing this, uh, let's create the div. Be, let's create that div before the div of the table. Uh, it doesn't matter where you cre when you create it, really. But I found that as I started to add more comics and the table got longer, I had to scroll down further to see the more info. Here, I'm going to have this more info appear right away, so that no matter how much I add to the table, it will always be easily visible. And again, when, I, when we put it into the Visual Studio project, it'll pop up at the moment that you click. This is going to be a div. It's going to have an ID. Div show comics info. This is a table of comics. This is the info of a particular comic. This div will also set it up so that it has uh, some further placeholders of paragraphs. The name of the comic will be visible here again. So we're going to need one, two, three, four, five. The name of the comic. The, the number, the year, the publisher, and if they wrote a comment. Maybe we should call that a note, a note comment. I don't think it'll matter if we call it note here because it won't matter, but we should probably call it note in the input field. Up on the input field we called it comment. Uh, never mind, we'll just call it comment. You know, I'm thinking about it again. We should have called it note, comment, whatever. So here it's going to display um, those items of the comic. So this is going to be a visual placeholder in, uh, in here. It's empty, of course, at the moment. The idea is I click on this Spider-Man comic, and then its info will appear up here. Later it'll be a pop-up. I click on this comic, its info appears there. And again, I just have it visible first so that we don't have to scroll very far. If I click on Superman 1, we don't have to then scroll further to see it below the table. So the info will be populated. That's going to happen depending on the ID, the data ID that's attached to a particular row. 
Okay, so this is going to display the info. Let's go back to the very end of our JavaScript. We've got the end of the show comics table. We want to still prepare to show the comics later. We can set that up uh, with a button click to, to trigger it. Right now we'll just have it automatically show the table of comics. So after showing the comics, we'll create a new function. Function show comics info. This comic. I'll explain that in a little bit. And function show comics info. This comics. This comic. It's all the way at the end. I'm at about line 236. Okay, so the idea is we're going to click the icon in the table for more info. And it's going to run that function. We need to do a little bit more here. If we back up to line 228 or so, where we created the icon, we have we have this icon which behaves like an active link because we have the A tag. It doesn't go anywhere. The pound sign is there to make it behave like a clickable item. We have, in my case, eight or nine instances of the icon. Right now we don't have a way that really links, that if I click this icon, it means this Superman comic. Click, it could be right now, technically, I click this icon and it means any one of these. I need a way to target that I clicked this icon and it targets this row of data. So first I'm going to say, in the instance of clicking the icon detect which row was clicked on. This particular row is a unique row compared to this one. So we're going to add a class to each of these so that we can target them via JavaScript. Right now they're plain HTML links. I want to use JavaScript so that we know that we're going to click one of them to, to run that function. So if we back up to where we built the, the row at about 225, where we started the row, we ended the row, that cell, TD, that cell, that last TD, encompasses the icon. I want to add a class to that cell, so any one of those icons that I click on will trigger this uh, JavaScript. It's a class because I, I want any one of those icons uh, to be found by the JavaScript. A class, remember, can be reused. ETN show comic info. Comics info. So 
So we've seen several times. An ID can be used as a trigger to do something else. We can also use a class. Any instance of that item with that class then could trigger the JavaScript. Previously we've had one instance of one button triggers the JavaScript here. Any instance of anything called BTN Show Comics info will trigger the JavaScript. So we need to create an event handler so that we click on the thing called BTN Show Comics info to run the JavaScript. We scroll down all the way to the very end, right before our JavaScript ends, we've got some event handlers. We've got an event handler for the submit. We need to create a handler. What happens in the event of clicking that any one of those buttons? So first of all, ldivshowcomics.on let me just confirm our names here. L div show comics. Uh, L div show comics table. Yeah, we renamed it. L div show comics table. So here we're saying <coughs> there's a table on screen that's showing the comics on the event of a click do the following so click this is technically saying anywhere you click on the table run the following function no I want to be when I click on the icon in the table run the function and we have to do this where we say first What's the parent element and then the child element? Quotes dot btn. What do we call it again? btn. Uh, what's that class we just called? I forget these things right away. btn show comics info. There we go. There we go. So this is what I ultimately wanted clicking on a button called btn show comics run a function. We cannot do it directly here because this is a dynamic element that doesn't exist at the moment of runtime. This class doesn't exist until function show comics prep runs. And in our case, yeah, it runs almost at the beginning of the program running, but ultimately this is going to be moved over to something else that will let you show the table. If the table wouldn't really show right away, you want to have a button, show the table. So we have to get creative here. Let's target the parent element that does exist at the moment that the program loads. Further then, target an element, a dynamic element that might exist later, so that then we can run the function show comics info. here. Target in HTML element that exists at runtime, then a dynamic element to listen to a click. Target an HTML element that exists at runtime, which is L div show comics table. Then a dynamic element, which is dot btn show comics info. So listen, listen for a click. function show comics info.
So ultimately, I'm trying to uh, target a particular element that is dynamic. It doesn't exist until later. So then run a function. OK, so it's going to run this function. Um, we have to do something really interesting here. Um, we have, in my case, I've got eight examples of that, of that, uh, of that read more icon. We have to use the object known as this, which will target this particular one you clicked on. So that's what got passed in up here, this comic. I'm going to click on one of those speech bubbles, and I need to care which one. It's the one this, the one that I clicked on. Not the one above it, not the one below it. It's the one that I clicked on, this. So that's going to get passed into uh, this function, console log this comic. In order for this to get passed into, we have to specify it here. Let's pass, let's run this function and pass into it this particular one I clicked on. Now this is valid and I'm going to break this for readability right before the start of function show, break it to the next line. This is going to be a little bit longer. So I've got the, the comma from the particular dynamic element and then I have the function. The default syntax is you call the you call the name of the function with our parentheses. Up here, we we used function event call the function with the event. So we have to do something similar. We have to call a function by naming function, passing in this data into it. So let's wrap function, open, close parentheses, open curly brace, close curly brace, right here. That's how we did it up here. We've got a function, parentheses, curly brace, an anonymous function, calling a named function with an object. Now we can pass an object. If we wanted to pass an object into a function, it would not work without this anonymous function. Let's just write this for the moment. That's not correct just yet. This is what I'm trying to do. Uh, let's run a function based on this particular button that I clicked on in order to pass the, this object into the function to use it there. You have to run an anonymous function first. And we have a jQuery. Delete this. We have a jQuery selector for this particular object that we clicked on. It's um, dollar parentheses this with the with the jQuery selector. Let's select this one that we clicked on, no matter what it is. Very special syntax, very special object. It means what what is this that I clicked on? Literally, this link that I clicked on. Now we're referencing it as an object. We can then pass it into here, which again we'll just write the same thing. Be careful with all of these opening and closing parentheses. There's a pair with a dollar selector this. There's a pair for the function show comics. And there's a curly braces for the function, which has its anonymous function, which has its own opening and close parentheses which is passing in the this, which has its own parentheses. And that last parenthesis closes the dot on. Then run a function show comics, which we pass into it the jQuery object this. Literally, you spell literally, literally, this object we clicked, or this object in question. Uh, 
that this is a, this is a very special object. It means this this button. It means this row. It, it means what is the thing we're dealing with? What is the thing we clicked on? What is the thing we selected? This. I think we, we can get something at this point if we save it and run it. It's not complete yet, but uh, if you try to click on any one of those little speech bubbles, something should happen. It's not complete yet, but something should happen because ultimately we're running this function, we're doing a console output of the object we passed into the, the, the function. Oops, let me check my parentheses, line 247. Um, it says unexpected. I put an extra one, so I just need to double check on click. There's the left, there's the left. Hmm. Check one thing here. Okay, that's okay. Uh, you don't need you don't need this first. This it's just function parentheses, but then there is that this in the named function. error. If I click on one of these comics, it's giving me some data, which we'll get to what that means in a moment, but each one of them should give you some output. Alright, so this event handler activates any of those uh, icons to be clicked. And I care about which particular row. It's this row. So that object of this row that I clicked on got um, passed into the function in question. It was this comic. The console then says, okay, show me what that object is, and then the console gives me something like this. I clicked on, let me just clear the console, let's say I clicked on this first Spider-Man comic. It says, okay, the, this object that you clicked on was this cell, TD, with this class. Looking inside of it gives you some stuff here, and then looking at you know, the zeroth item here gives you a lot of other stuff too. And eventually in here I see some stuff that I recognize. Inner HTML, there's the icon. Inner text, there's that icon. This is a TD and a bunch of extra stuff that is, that is a lot. Outer HTML. Um, that's the cell. So this is what cell I clicked on. I clicked on this uh, 
this icon and it reported back to me, you clicked on the cell. I need to care about what is that whole row of data, that row of data. This is a child of that parent element, because we've got a row. The row is the parent. This cell is a child. This cell is another child, and this cell is another child. So doing this is referencing this icon. I want to reference the data in this whole row. So we need to refine it right here. This object, opening and close parentheses, dot parent, opening and close parentheses. Oops, parent. So a moment ago it showed that this represented the exact cell that I clicked on. Actually, I want the, the, whole, the whole row, so the parent. So we pass into the jQuery object this. Refined to the parent, the tr, with, so the parent element, the tr, with jQuery method uh, dot parent. So, j, so dot parent is a jQuery method that retrieves the data of the parent element. If I've got an image in a paragraph, the parent of the image is the paragraph. If I've got an image in a paragraph in a div, the parent of the paragraph is the div. It's the level above it. So this was just that cell. Which cell did I click on? I want to deal with the parent. I want to deal with the whole row of this particular cell I clicked on. That, ultimately, is what gets passed into the function. And if I run it at this point, my output's a little different. Before I run it, it's showing here's the information of the cell you clicked on. If I run it now and click on one of these, Here's the information of the row you clicked on. This row then has has this uh, this data in this different way. Let me see if I can show the example. So this says it's got three child elements. This row has three child elements. Yeah, one, two, three has three elements. This row also has um, the actual inner HTML. There's that TD, there's that TD, there's that other TD. The text inside of it is there's the text, there's that text, there's that text. So this information is represented then by, by, by this new object. That we've passed into the function. Okay, so uh, we're dealing with the with the whole row of data, and that's what this did up here. This comic. See if we do this console.log this comic dot data quotes ID.
we have the attribute data-id. This is how we retrieve it with, with j, uh, jQuery. So up here, uh, output the data, all the data, it's a lot of data, all the data representing the, the row, which is tr. And then here, output the info of data equals id, data dash id equals attribute of the row. So again, ultimately, going back, JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language. It deals with things in as objects. Uh, we can represent any HTML uh, code as JavaScript objects. And um, there's a lot of built-in data that most people don't ever really look at. Most, even most developers don't even look at or realize that exists. But having a, a TD it has so much data built into it. What's the text inside of it? What's the width? What's its height? What's its color? What's all of these properties that we don't know, even know exist? And then we created a new property, data-id. So here I'm saying, show me the ID of this particular row that I've clicked on. The, the original dot on click was simply to set up, let's be able to click on any one of these icons to do what we want. What we want to do is deal with the data of this row. So this whole row of data is represented by this comic. And then we're saying, OK, give me the data-id of this comic, which represents this row. This row is represented by, wherever you clicked, give me the parent, the whole row. Let's see what that looks like if I run it. Click on the first Spider-Man, AMA1. Click on the second Spider-Man, AMA 140. The third one, AMA 17. So I'm going to find this in here somewhere. In, if I browse around in here, I'm going to find AMA. Can I find AMA? AMA 1. Oh, there it is. Uh, outer HTML, TD data tr data dash id it's in there in the in the huge object of data as well as each one of these items has their own so if i go with x files dash on that xf2 so it is pulling the the data id which we created up here. Create a table row. Set the data ID to the underscore ID, the three letters plus number. And then here I'm retrieving it. Here. From this whole row of data, check what the ID is. Once we know that, we know which comic we're dealing with to then um, do something with. We'll do one more thing, then we'll and we'll wrap up with lab time. Um, yes? No, because it's not an ID like, like a class. It's data-ID. Like when we had data role or data transition. Um, This is arbitrary. This can be anything. So I chose to do it as ID because in the pouch database, every comic is uniquely identified with underscore ID. But this this could be like um, comic ID. So then here we'd say data comic ID. So we made up data dash comic ID. Is it 
on the part again. It's going to be something about up here, most likely. Uh, here it's saying, find some element which is data dash something. And the something is ID. So make sure back on line 226 that you have data dash ID. And then that is being, and, and that it is being set to the underscore ID from the database. The point of us doing uh, console log data ID is to confirm that I'm reading uh, I'm reading the underscore ID of that row. Every row for the user, we see the name of the comic and the number, and that's all from the database that has the unique ID. I can confirm in my in my database viewer over here that I have all of these comics with a particular ID. Uh, like that. So each of these has the, the unique ID. That unique ID is being inserted invisibly into the, the data-ID of every row. We can see that actually if you look under elements. We don't look at this screen very much. But if you look at the elements inside of the table, inside of the table, body, right here. So if you want to look at it this way, under the elements view, we've got this table with rows, and each of these rows has that data ID, the three letters plus the number. Knowing that, the ultimate thing that we want to do is get the full information of that one comic. We'll create a variable at this point, call it temp comic, set it equal to this comic data. The console up there was to confirm that we are seeing the three letter the three letter number, the unique ID of the comic. So we're going to store that in a variable that we can use. So that ultimately we have db.get. We have to provide a unique ID here. So I know I've got AMA1. Don't write this, but I know we've got AMA1. So that would extract Amazing Spider-Man number one plus the year plus the publisher, etc., etc. Well, the point of creating that temp comic is that that, is, that holds an instance of the current row through all of the other code we set up. So here we'll say get the temp comic. Temp comic holds the ID in question of that row. As usual, we have a function with a success and failure. Break those curly braces and then deal with the if else of the failure or success.
I click on a I click on the icon no matter which one I click on I'm then checking the ID the data dash ID of that row the one that was set up with this I'm using that ID from the database to get that one record, that one document out of the ID, which could be a failure or a success. If I can confirm I get a failure or a success, then ultimately when I get success, I will display it on screen. So if I run this console, I click on a valid comic. So there's line 240, which confirmed of the ID. Then there's a success from 246. It's the object. It's the complete data of that comic. Let me add one where I do add extra info. Let's see, logo number one from 1993 from DC Comics, uh, first issue, uh, regular series. I haven't put anything under publisher or comment, so I'll put something here now. Save that, refresh it. So I have a new comic alphabetized. Click the icon there, and I want to see that this object, LOB1, has a comment, an issue number, a publisher, a title, unique ID, year, underscore ID, and a rev, a revision, that we'll need later when we make changes. So all of these other ones, I hadn't put anything for the uh, comment or the publisher. I, I was able to successfully get that comic in question and ultimately this else leads me to those empty fields that I have on screen, those placeholders. I'm going to fill them properly. So, selector here, pound div, show comics info. Let me just confirm that's what we call it. Yeah, div show comics info. Dot HTML. Success dot title. Success holds the whole object, this particular object, which has a title, a comment, a number, etc. So again, here we're saying the title property of the success object, which represents the one comic. We're saying in that placeholder that we have up there, the show comic simple, write some HTML to display this title. That makes sense, but the problem is. It, it erased what's there, but also I have three, let me refresh that, I have five fields to display. Um, and here I've said, write the title. I need to write also the title, the name, etc. And each of those is made from a paragraph. I've got this div. There's a paragraph for the name and the number and everything. There's a trick that we can do here. Instead of adding IDs to each of these, instead of writing more and doing more effort, there's a really cool way to do this. This is the first paragraph, the second paragraph, the third, the fourth, the fifth. We can say, on the first paragraph, write the name. On the fourth paragraph, write the publisher. So we don't have to do anything special about adding extra IDs and such. We can say the fourth paragraph do this, the second paragraph do that. We can do that by writing here. Okay, we're going to target the div in general within the quotes space paragraph colon eq for equals opening and closing parentheses 
0, starting from 0. So find the div space and then find the paragraph that equals to the zero width paragraph. In the zero width paragraph, write the title. So the zero width paragraph gets the title. A moment ago, everything disappeared because we didn't specify which paragraph. So everything in the div was replaced by the title. By refining the selector, I've selected, basically it's easier to read it from right to left. The zero width paragraph in this div. Write some HTML representing the title <coughs> of that particular comic. We're going to need the exact same thing for the next lines, and I'm going to say copy and paste this. Because then all you need to change is now go for the first paragraph, which is the second one, and give me there the, 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 the number. So again, from right to left, the, the index one, which is at least 0, 1, the index one paragraph, in that div, write HTML, the number of that comic. Next line, same thing. Now the second equals to the second EQ is equals dot year. So jQuery selector to target the the div the parent div is the show comics info and the zero zero width zero width um, first paragraph to write HTML into it. with paragraphs, the first paragraph, the second, in, into the next ones. Is there a way to keep it to where it's the name, and then if someone puts it in there, it's like, so it doesn't stick out? Yeah, we're going to do that one moment. There is a way to, uh, I think it's called append, don't do this one, but there is, a, I believe, append, which will add to what's already there. The good thing about it is that it's going to say name, and then it's going to add the title. The bad thing is it will keep name and Spider-Man, and when you click on another one, Batman, it'll say name, Spider-Man, Batman. It'll keep adding to what's already there. So we have to think even harder to, okay, clear out what's there and then put in what's new. So I think the easiest way is to do HTML and then to manually just rewrite the word name. So write the word name again plus then the type. There's other ways to Maybe be a little smarter about it, but that's that'll work. A lot to consider nowadays. Question. Then where do we define these values? Those are coming from way at the beginning when we set up, right here, line about 120. When we asked for all of the input in the fields, we created a comic. And in there, we stored into pouch title, number, year, publisher, comic, and unique ID. You don't have to by their No, val, val comment and val title was temporary. That's the name of what was typed at the moment that the person types it to click save. Once it gets stored into the database, now they are referred to by the titles, the keys that we make up here. So now we have to submit it, they're already the keys. 
piece. Um, after they get submitted, this stuff goes away. These are temporary variables. After submitting, these get stored into the database named with these keys and whatever data that was. That's what we're saying here. From the database, we pull this out of the database. Give me the dot number, give me the dot year, the dot publisher, the dot comment, the dot title. Mm -hmm. So let's see how that looks. I'll click that Spider Man comic. So I wrote it. I didn't have any comments there, so it's empty. On Lobo, I did. So if I click that, it shows up there. And again, it, it's, it's going to be easier just to retype what we want that row to be, that paragraph to be called, instead of trying to be a little clever. So I'm just going to have to rewrite here on each of these. Uh, this one is the number. Year. Don't forget that space, or else that text will be right next to that value. Publisher. And comment. So we, we haven't done this before, where inside of the jQuery selector, we always had one element that we were trying to select. Uh, jQuery selectors can be very complex, because here we're saying, search for this space, then search for that. That's kind of like a CSS, where we had, let's say we had div space P, and then define the background color. We had search for the div, space, then search for the paragraph, and define its background color. jQuery selectors are very similar to CSS selectors. It's easier to read it from right to left. This thing inside of this thing. Now, if I uh, click on Spider-Man, I only had name, number, and year filled in, no, no publisher or comment. But if I choose an example like Lobo number one, I did fill in all of those. So it's got the name, the number, the year, the publisher, and the comment. So all of these work because the, once you set up the algorithm, they all follow. So X files number negative one before number one before negative two. And this one that's just gibberish, I click on that and it shows gibberish. We're gonna wrap <laughs> we're gonna wrap up in a moment because next time, well I want to delete items that uh, that I don't really want. Uh, we're gonna set up that imagine this is gonna open up in a nice jQuery window. This is gonna pop up, show you the info. Then we'll have buttons to edit and to delete. I misspelled something, so I want to click Edit to edit what's already been saved. I don't want it anymore. I'm going to press a button to delete, and it'll delete that item from the database. This is why I wanted to focus on, let's just focus on a plain old HTML file. I don't want to wrestle with, with Visual Studio and <coughs> compiling it and all of that. Notice we spent all of this time to figure out the logic of, of this program. Once we drop it back into Visual Studio, it's actually going to then quickly then wrap up. The, uh, the biggest challenge of this is figuring out the code, the algorithm, how does it work. 
uh, setting up Visual Studio and all of that is relatively easy and understanding the Visual Studio project with its icons and structure is relatively easy. This honestly is the hard part. This is one of the hardest things you'll, you'll learn most likely. If you are struggling, that's okay. It is hard dealing with this data. Now imagine dealing it with, you know, terabytes of data. Right here it's eight items in my database. But once you can figure out the algorithm with eight items, this will work with 800 items. It's just figuring out the, the algorithm. That's why there's no book for this class. This, this is, you know, this is so different or unique or customized. Conceptually, the code that we're doing, you can find this in that jQuery book that I recommended. This stuff about EQ and all of that, it's like on page 40 or something. And I don't have the book memorized. But it's in there. All of the stuff that we're doing here, you know, you can get it right out of the book. We're just putting the pieces of the puzzle of JavaScript and jQuery together to do what I want. I have the vision. Early on, we had the vision. A database, an app for the database of our comics or any inventory. Putting it together is the hard part, of course. What's the right code that does the right thing? What's the logic of it to, to work? When it all comes together, it's a great feeling. And you're going to have more of those great feelings as we keep working. Because for the moment, we're done. We'll have a little lab time. When we come back, we'll do the edit and then delete. And we'll be very close to putting it into our Visual Studio project.